Welcome back everybody to my favourite video every week, the weekly mailbox. Your chance to ask me anything you like, so much so that last week we had a brilliant question about Spider-Man. Yes, I mean we usually focus on motorsports and Formula 1, but sometimes I pick out a random question, we have a bit of a giggle, and we enjoy our day. But anyway, today we've got five Formula 1 slash Formula E based questions, all of them very, very juicy. So let's jump in to the first one from Ashutosh, I think is how you say it. Apologies if I got that incorrect. Really like this question though. When will Ferrari join Formula E according to you? Give your thoughts about it. I like this question and I mean, don't get me wrong. I like most of the questions I pick out. That's why I put them on the videos. But I like it because I've never seen this question in any of my videos. And it's a topic that in the Formula E world, at least from my personal perspective I don't think comes up very often but why is that Ferrari obviously one of the most historic motor racing teams in Formula One obviously they've been in every single season of Formula One but just motor racing in general they've practically been there since day one so why is there so little talk little chatter about them making the switch over to Formula E Mercedes, obviously, they are making the transition this year. Renault famously won the first three seasons, the team's championships, and won the driver's championship with Sebastian Buemi in season two. But Ferrari, are they a brand, realistically, that's looking to electric power? Because at the end of the day, that's generally what most of these teams are making the switch over to Formula E, is help invest into technologies that could potentially help the road car business. I mean, you could argue that motor racing itself is just a giant branding scheme. I mean, obviously it depends on your point of view. However, Ferrari, at the moment, have zero electric cars. They have a few hybrid cars. I tried to do a little bit of research, but unfortunately Ferraris are a little bit out of my price range, so it's not something I usually look into too much. But road cars, no Fully electric cars. Again, a couple of hybrid cars, but no fully electric cars. Mercedes, they're taking the leap and investing into electric road vehicles and electric technologies. So that makes sense. So for Ferrari, I think for them at the moment, the target is definitely getting on top in Formula One. Mercedes, they've been on top now since 2014. So you could argue that they're trying to explore different avenues. And I think that's fair enough. I don't think they'll leave Formula 1, I'm not saying that, but I think definitely you've seen over the years multiple brands test out different series. Porsche, for example, they historically dominated WEC, now have moved over to Formula E, so it's definitely a competitive environment, and you've got to be serious if you go into Formula E. And I wonder for Ferrari, a little bit like Renault, their focus is on Formula 1, and they feel, rather than doing a half-hearted attempt in Formula E, it's best off all focus in Formula 1. So, to answer the question, I'm not seeing Ferrari joining Formula E before Season 10. Sorry about that, but I think a Formula 1 push, definitely. Next question, the Formula 1 debate show asks, What would you call your fans if you could choose a name for a group of them? <sighs> what an awkward question. What a <laughs> thinking that I might have fans is just a very weird thing. I don't know if I like that. Anyway, for you subscribers, you lovely subscribers of the channel, I sort of have my own name for you. You're probably aware it's the Grosjean Army, is how I refer to my subscribers. However, don't run away just yet. I'm aware a lot of you don't like that. A lot of you get very upset when I say, well done Grosjean Army, thank you Grosjean Army. So I try not to use it, so thank you guys at the F1 Debate Show for throwing me under the bus here. But I thought I'd include this question because I thought I'd leave it open to the floor a little bit. Because as much as I love the Grosjean Army, there's room for improvement. And so if anyone's got any ideas, of course we've got our usual audience participation question at the very end, which you can, of course, comment for. But if you've got any ideas that you fancy using... Um, yeah, feel free to throw them in the comments below because my creativity on this kind of subject isn't isn't brilliant, I think is the best way to put it. So any ideas, of course, throw them down in the comments section below. But at the moment, you're all known as the Grosjean Army. So 
if you're losing sleep at night, get your thinking hats on and try and make a change. But thank you for that question. Put a smile on my face. Hakal always asks questions. Don't know if I'm saying that name properly. Again, so please correct me because I know you're always in the comments section. So if I'm wrong, let me know. Another good question, and it's a really topical one at the moment. If Sebastian Vettel gets a race ban, who will replace him? Verline, Kimi, Ericsson. Well, will Ericsson then go in the Alpha? But maybe he's an option. Hartley or Ericsson. Yeah, I should have read ahead there. <laughs> However, there's also another name I think you could add to that list. Uh, Giovinazzi. He is currently, I mean, there's plenty of Ferrari drivers that are currently working behind the scenes. Giovinazzi technically is the third and reserve driver. So if he wasn't in an Alfa Romeo, I would say it's pretty much nailed on. He'd be driving for Ferrari. That being said, I don't think he's had the best of seasons in Formula One so far this year. There's been improvements for sure, but that's a big step up from a guy that only a couple of races ago in Spa lost it through Puon, a mistake of his own. And don't get me wrong, I think he drove a really good race in Spa. I think that might be a little bit too much pressure, even if it's for one race or two. Not too sure about that. Hartley isn't a dreadful shout. It all depends on when the ban is, though, because he is signed up for Dragon in Formula E for Season 6, so his primarily objective, if you want to say, is going to be with that. Even if a Formula 1 drive for Ferrari comes up, not too sure if Dragon will let him do it. Obviously, that's a contractual thing behind closed doors and you never quite know there. Likewise with Pascal Verlein, I'd love to see him in a Ferrari. I'd love to see him back in Formula 1. Really proved himself a worthy driver in Formula E last year and his two seasons in Formula 1. But likewise with Hartley, I think it'll be difficult to do a bit of wiggle room to get him out of that contract. So, to be honest with you, I think if Vettel gets a ban, it becomes a really sticky situation. I think if I was in Ferrari's shoes, I'd try my best to get Kimi Raikkonen back for a couple of races. I mean, I think it's very easy to forget he's a more recent race winner than Sebastian. And also he finished third last year in the championship in front of Bottas and Max Verstappen. So I think Raikkonen's still got it. I think if they can't get Raikkonen, I think it will be Gio, just because he is technically that third driver and reserve driver. But I don't think Sebastian will get a race ban. Although recent races, it's been a little bit of clumsy incidents, I think he'll be fine. Thomas DG asks, will and could McLaren ever become a works team? Now, this wouldn't be the first time they're being, or would become a works team. Uh, let's say in recent history, they became a works team with Honda back in 2015. And I think that story proved that it doesn't always wreak benefits straight away, becoming a works team. Now, McLaren took the brave gamble to leave Honda last year. They Well, they run Renault engines last year and they've continued to do so this year. And I think it's fair to say this has been one of their best years for a very long time. And if things had gone their way in races like Germany very easily could have been up on the podium this year. However, they have been consistent. Reliability hasn't always been there, and that's cost them plenty of points so far in 2019. But steps of progress have been made. And whilst the last couple of Grand Prix, they could have had a big points haul, and Renault have caught them after Monza, a brilliant race for them, a fourth and fifth, I think it's fair to say McLaren are the best of the rest this year, and I would be very surprised if Renault would catch them. They've got a good driver lineup, a very good driver lineup. I'm instantly going to change that. Very good driver lineup. I really rate Carlos Sainz and Lando Norris. So I don't think that area of the team they could improve much to really help them propel forward to the top three teams. The Renault engines, I think it's fair to say it's probably the worst on the grid. So there's rumours at the moment that McLaren are trying to look to a switch to Mercedes engines. And I think that would be a real step forward for them, not only in terms of performance, but also in terms of reliability. It, would they be safer going with a Mercedes than they would a works team? Because, first of all, who's coming into Formula 1? At the moment, Formula E, we've already spoke about this earlier on, that's the big focus for a lot of these manufacturers. So will any new works manufacturers join Formula 1? I think it's unlikely. If there's the option to do it again... At the moment, I'd say do your best to get a Mercedes engine. After the disastrous 
<laughs> period with Honda. I think at the moment, keep it simple, slowly progress forward, catch up with Red Bull if possible and make a step forward next year. And then in 21, maybe make a switch. But I think Mercedes is the most sensible and then stick with Renault. I think over going to a works team personally at the moment, at the moment. But if they can find someone in five or six years down the line that can make a really good engine for them, fair play. Final question, audience participation question. I know you guys love this and, and so do I. From the Raging Rhino himself, one of the best names we have ever had. I think there was also Raccoon Ghost or something once. That was a strong name. But Raging Rhino is back. How many different driver champions do you think we will have in the 2020s? So in the 2000s, I believe we had five. We had Schumacher, Alonso, Raikkonen, Hamilton, Button. And you can't really include Vettel. In the 2010s that we're currently in, we've had Vettel, Hamilton and Rosberg. Three. I actually think in the 2020s we'll have a few more. Primarily because I think Formula One with the 2021 regulations are making a giant push to make the cars not necessarily as equal as possible, but to make the championship a little bit more unpredictable, give more drivers the opportunity to race and win, regulate the cars a little bit more. So, 10 years is a long time. I'm going to say five. That's obviously a pretty boring answer, I think, because I think we'd all love it to be 10. But I think Max Verstappen, he will find himself in a race-winning car, and even if he's not, I think a little bit like Alonso in 2010, 2012, he's the kind of driver capable to drag an OK car to brilliant results. I mean, even look in 2019. I don't think that Red Bull's all that good, but Verstappen behind the wheel, whoa, that's a spicy partnership. Maybe Hamilton could keep going. That's probably a, a fair statement. Ferrari with Leclerc and perhaps Vettel, if he stays, could get a championship. And then you look at more younger guys. We've just spoke about McLaren. If they can sort themselves out and if they can continue their trajectory after this season and improvements, where could they be? Could it be a four-way title hunt? Renault, where can they be? And then you've got younger guys like Alex Albon, George Russell. Where are they going to fit in with the grid? Where, where are they going to be in terms of who's going to be their teammate? We just don't know. It's a difficult question to ask. A <laughs> difficult question to answer. But of course, that's why I've left it for you guys. So you can do part of the job for me because I, I'm so stuck. I think five, Verstappen, Leclerc, Hamilton, and then maybe, let's say, Norris and Russell. Hmm. I don't know. I want to know your thoughts in the comments below. That's a really difficult question, but that's why I included it. A little bit of fun for the end of the video. As always, if you want to ask a question, throw it down in the comments below for next week. Thank you very much for watching. If you've made it this far and you haven't subscribed, what are you doing? Feel free to do so below. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.